Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko with ShambanaJazz.com. I'm talking today with guitarist Zach Harris. Based in Minneapolis by way of Carbondale, Illinois, Zach Harris is an adjunct professor of music at Hamlin University in the Twin Cities, where he teaches jazz guitar, jazz bass, and jazz composition. He holds a BA in music from Southern Illinois University. He's hitting the road with his sextet, the Zach Harris Group, in support of his second album with the group Small Wonders, which is out now on Shifting Paradigm Records. Zach's coming to the Rose Bowl Tavern here in Urbana on Tuesday, November 9th. Zach Harris, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, you mentioned to me uh, earlier when we were uh, getting stuff set up that you uh, you actually played in a jam band during your days in Carbondale. Uh, what prompted the switch over to jazz? Well, yeah, I played in it like a jam bluegrass band that toured for about four years in my early 20s out of Carbondale. We played up at the Canopy Club. Oh, okay. Um, and throughout that whole time, I was in school for music and I was playing jazz pretty regularly already. And uh, just basically when that band stopped touring and my now wife and I moved up to the Twin Cities, instead of kind of splitting my focus between the, the bluegrass stuff and the jazz, I just went full jazz. So, and that's what I've been focused on for the last 15, 20 years, almost huh? exclusively. I've, I've been reading uh, some of the media up in Minneapolis and you are clearly getting a, a ton of accolades with your live shows and, and some of your earlier projects that you've recorded. How did this particular sextet come together? Well, this group started uh, actually way back in 2009. Um, the the piano player Brian Nichols and the the bassist and drummer uh, brothers Chris Bates and J T Bates are some of my favorite musicians here in town and I was already playing with Chris uh, in this group called Atlantis Quartet that I've been a part of for uh, ever since I moved here basically and uh, but when I would hear the three of them play it reminded me of that like '60s Miles Quintet the rhythm section from there with uh, Tony and Ron and Herbie. And I was just like, man, I want to play with that sound. And not to say that uh, the music that I write for this band or the music that we're doing necessarily sounds like that. I think at times it, it can, but I just like the versatility of it and the volatility of it and playing with those guys. It can really kind of go anywhere at any point. And, and that's what I wanted to explore. At the same time, I was uh, playing in a collective group as I mentioned before, Atlantis Quartet, where we all were writing. And I had stuff that I was writing that I felt like needed a piano. That was that other group is guitar, saxophone, bass and drums. And I wanted to take on more of a, a horn role and have a piano there to provide kind of a deeper uh, harmony underneath what I was doing. And, and so that's when we formed the group. Uh, we put out a record in 2012 called The Garden uh, with a saxophone on there as well. And um, it's been a number of years of uh, now being uh, a, a father. And so <laughs> working on my own solo project has taken some time to kind of generate everything. But <laughs> when, when I finally had that opportunity, all the tunes together and 2019, we went into the studio and uh, there's a real focus on melody uh, on all the songs on this record. And I, I really wanted to kind of make that aspect of it bigger and bolder. And so we brought in uh, trumpet player John Raymond as well to really get that kind of two horns and the guitar all just cranking the melody out. And and I think it really works. Uh, the new CD with the sextet is called Small Wonders. This has uh, nine compositions on it. These are all original uh, pieces, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's listen to a new track off the uh, CD here. This one's called The Void. Tell us about this track. Uh, well, the the title is a little uh, referral to social media and the ills <laughs> that that can lead us down. But really, it, it was, um, as I mentioned before, that kind of mid-60s Miles group. This is a tune that I wrote to really kind of let the band shine on just kind of letting go, um, swinging it out and, and, and going for that. So, Okay, here's the Zach Harris group with the track The Void. Thank you. 
That was The Void by the Zach Harris Group. They'll be visiting Champaign-Urbana for the first time at the Rose Bowl coming up on November 9th. Zach, what's playing with a sextet like as opposed to a trio or a quartet? I mean, obviously, you've got more voices and you can access more elaborate harmonies and, and deeper constructs. But what are some of the other considerations that you have to factor in when you've got that many instruments on the bandstand? Yeah, great question. Uh, I think one thing is just arranging the solos. Uh, you know, the, when you have six players up there, all great improvisers, great soloists, it, I think, can be easy to be like, all right, everybody's going to blow on this one. And, the tr you know, the truth is, like, have keeping it to two or three solos is generally a good idea. On the track we just heard, that was kind of an exception where we let, we let everybody have a, a little bit of time there. But from, a, from an arrangement standpoint, figuring out how to, you know, kind of spread out the, the solos throughout the set, throughout the tunes, is uh, one of the challenges mm -hmm. of the sextet. As a guitarist... You know, when I'm playing in a trio or a quartet, my role is much more harmonic, much more of the, the chordal instrument. But once once we add the piano and then we have the other horns as well, like I feel more like I get to become part of the horn section, uh, if you will. And for this record and a lot of things with, with this project, I like to kind of think of the guitar as more of a more of a horn voice than than a chordal instrument. Although certainly I do some chordal things throughout, but mm. you have somebody like Brian Nichols, who is just a tremendous pianist. Uh, you know, a lot of times I can just kind of let him have that, have that role and he'll make it, make it shine. So you mentioned earlier that you made the the switch over to jazz about 15, 20 years ago and, and have been full speed ahead ever since. Was there a, a show that you saw of a, a particular jazz performer who absolutely grabbed you by the scruff of the neck and said, yep, this is what I want to do? So I started uh, studying jazz after I ended up in Carbondale, Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, this would have been like 98, I think, 97, 98. And I was playing in a band with, uh, it just happened to be that I met a piano player. He got a bunch of other guys from the the jazz department at SIU down there together and all of a sudden I was playing kind of my like silly jam band tunes silly because they were mine not because they were jam band but uh and I was playing it with these really like high level young musicians and they basically convinced me to go to school for music and then I started checking out jazz and I was learning stuff from them and um and one of my professors there told me about Pat Martino and oh. Pat Martino was kind of having a big resurgence after having had an aneurysm and right. kind of had to make a full career comeback. And this was kind of the pinnacle of that comeback time. And, uh, and I became totally obsessed and, you know, kind of throughout my years in college, that's what I was all into was transcribing Pat and doing all that. And I went up and saw him play at jazz at the bistro. Um, I don't know. It must've been. Yeah. Like, it's a legendary uh, St. Louis venue. That's right. Yeah. And uh, so that one kind of just, you know, blew me away right there. And I started to understand like the, the real intensity that the guitar could have playing that music as well. You, uh, you also, in addition to uh, recording and, and playing in the Twin Cities, I, I mentioned at the, the beginning of this that you're also an instructor and an educator in jazz. We got a pretty solid jazz music school here in Champaign-Urbana. Is there a particular piece of advice or lessons that you would uh, offer to some of the students here? I know that's kind of a trick question. I mean, there's only so much you can get in a, in a one minute answer on that. So sure, sure. I mean, you know, at any point in somebody's development playing this music, I think that it's just really important to one, just go all in for a while. You know, I feel like anybody who really makes it has at least a period where they're just, they're not, you know, dipping their toe in it, like, or just getting by, but they go all out. When I was in college, I really, like I said, was kind of late to the party and was trying to figure it out. And because of that, I kind of felt like I had a lot of ground to make up. And so there were a couple of years in there where I would just like go to the, get in the practice room early in the morning and I would be in there for hours 
a day. And uh, I felt like I was able to kind of make up some ground through that. But then you got to keep doing it. And I think the most important thing also is to make sure that you're making music outside of school. When I was in college and was in a combo class, the first thing I did was go to the local uh, Mexican restaurant and try to set up a weekly gig and was very fortunate that they said yes. And, uh, you know, we ended up doing that gig for, I think, six years on Monday nights down in Carbondale. And that's probably where I really learned the most. Not that I didn't have a great education as well at the college, but you need to have a place to really like test things out in, I think, like a non-academic world as well, where you can really play with your peers and kind of figure it out. Nothing like real world practical application. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're hitting the road here in just a little bit. You've got uh, several cities on this tour to promote the new album. Is this your, is this your first tour uh, post COVID? Yeah, it is. And uh, we, you know, because of everybody's busy schedules, we had to kind of split it up into two little mini tours basically. But we, we just did Chicago and Milwaukee and had great shows, both places. Uh, we actually sold out the jazz estate in Milwaukee, which oh, was great. great. And uh, things have picked up in terms of gigging uh, over the summer and into the fall now uh, after the lockdown period of COVID. But this is the first time getting on the road, you know, those two dates I mentioned before, and then going out uh, for this little run in a couple of weeks and very excited about it. And um, it feels so great. You know, one of the great things about touring for all of the, you know, difficulties of being on the road and trying to kind of make all that work in this day and age, even just playing two nights in a row, the level of intensity that we were able to bring that second night, just with everything so familiar, um, it's amazing. And I'm really looking forward to having several nights in a row where we can really dig deep on the tunes. Well, I guarantee you, we're looking forward to having you here in town in uh, Champaign-Urbana. I've been speaking with uh, guitarist Zach Harris. His new album, Small Wonders, is out now on Shifting Paradigm Records. You can also find Zach on Bandcamp and at his website, ZachHarris.com. Zach is going to be bringing his sextet to the Rose Bowl Tavern on Tuesday, November 9th, and we definitely encourage you to come out and check out the show. We're going to leave you with another track off the new album. This one's called Ominous Skies. Zach Harris, thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks again for having me, Sean. I'm Sean Kutzko for Shambanajazz.com. <laughs>